me, I'm sort of a bit of a, a hermit slash <laughs> alpha incel. Is that a thing? We'll go with it. I'm going to play as a dwarf female. Oh, where's my beard? Oh, uh, she's not too bad. A little bit of a butter face, but not bad. Not bad. Facial hair. She needs a beard. Yeah. I've been with worse. New game. All right, guys. Let's get right into this. Let's take a quick look, guys. We're in Baldur's Gate 3, and today we're going to talk about the customization options inside Baldur's Gate 3. Why are we doing this? Really simple. A lot of people, before they buy a game, especially an early access game like this, they want to know if, what the customizations options are. And if you're an old school gamer like I am, you played Baldur's Gate 1, 2 kind of stuff. Well, you know what? Making your character and having that, you know, unique character that is unique skills and all that stuff that goes with it you kind of want to have that and you want to know what you're getting into so let's go right into this also you want to know if the game is replayable this game looks replayable here we go all right guys here is the initial screen i'm just going to twirl her around a little bit and a few things uh first off before i talk about it uh i'll give you a heads up this is 85 gigabytes on my drive and i read somewhere that it could be up to 150 gigs i haven't seen that but that is something that I read. Okay, so let's get right into the basics. Uh, there are two genders in this game. Now, normally that makes sense, but it's 2020 and that's a controversial position. Some people say there's two genders, some people say there's 58 or some number in between. I'm not gonna weigh in on that, but uh, this game has two genders, uh, male, female. I should note that changing genders as I'm doing here, man, female, man, it does not impact the base stats here. So. The men and women in this game are the same. Equality. Very cool. Uh, the next thing that you're going to notice is you can select your origin. So I'm going to go up to the top left here, as you can see. Click on origin and bang. At first I thought this might be referring to race, but it is not. Origin is separate. Origins are apparently the equivalent of pre-made characters. So, um, and and pre-made characters, as you know, maybe from the, from the first Baldur's Gate, for example, they have their own unique backgrounds. So uh, I can't confirm this, but it looks like the custom origin, at least right now, it's the only option available. This might change, pardon me, in the future, but as of now, you can only select custom. And you've always felt you had a greater calling, but it's never borne fruit. Okay, cool. Uh, the next thing you'll see here is you can change your name. So I'm going to go from tab, and I'm going to type in big C, and boom, there we go. All right, guys, the next thing you're going to notice here is you can select your background. I'll give you a heads up, there are 13 backgrounds, and each background gives you a different set of proficiencies. In my playthrough, I'm going to select Sage, but I'm going to show you a few of them here while I click. So Acolyte is if you spend your life in service in a temple, so you get insight proficiency and religion proficiency, which we'll talk about later. Um, charlatan, you're a fast-talking huckster, criminal, self-explanatory. Entertainer, hey, you want to play as an elf Elvis? Go nuts! Folk hero, guild artisan, noble. There are 13 of them. Hermit, which is kind of like me. I'm sort of a bit of a, a hermit slash <laughs> alpha incel. Is that a thing? We'll go with it. Uh, outlander, sage, uh, sailor, etc., etc. So there are a whole bunch. Urchin looks like fun. After surviving a childhood on the streets. Okay. So I'm going to go as a sage because I'm going to play as, a, as like a, a spellcaster or a wizard. Not a mage, but a wizard in this game. But uh, just so you guys know, there are a whole bunch of different backgrounds. And each background, like I suggested, has a background feature. And this one has Arcana, which gives you bonus roll to any made with Arcana, any rolls with Arcana, and a History Proficiency, which is, I was not I was pretty good at it in grade 11. So we'll go with that. All right, so that is it for Origin. Now let's get into the next bit, and that is Race. All right, guys, in this game, there are currently eight races i don't know if there's gonna be more but i think that's it um and you're gonna see here up at the top right there's elves tieflings which i i've never actually come across those in any of my books or games before drow or dro depending on how you want to pronounce it human gith yankee again that's kind of unique i haven't seen those guys or gals either dwarves have elves elves etc etc um there's eight of them and each of them as you can see here uh they give you a unique Basically, they give you unique features and traits. So if I'm selecting on the elf, for example, you can select a sub-race, high elf, wood elf. Well, those are your two options. And each one of them, you'll have, okay, wood elf. You'll see here that they've each got a little write-up. I don't want to go too far down the rabbit hole here. But when we're looking at replayability, tons of stuff going on here. 
Also, you'll see here like the tiefling, you can select your subrace, so Asmodeus, Zeriel, Mephistopheles, which is a <laughs> nice way of saying the devil. So again, guys, there's an enormous amount of customization and replayability here. It's amazing. Lothsworn Drow, Seldarine Drow, two on this one. If your humans have nothing, they're pretty basic. Get Yankee basic, dwarves, gold dwarves, shield dwarves, gold dwarves. So anyways, I won't go too far down the, the, the rabbit hole here, but there's tons of races, tons of different sub races and features, each unique to that race. All right, guys, the next thing here is you're going to see appearance. Appearance is, well, it is what it is. Uh, uh, right now I'm playing, as looks like I'm a dwarf here. And you, as you can see on the right side here, there's a whole bunch of customization options. I'm going to play as a dwarf female. Oh, where's my beard? Oh, uh, she's not too bad. A little bit of a butter face, but not bad, not bad. All right, so you can see you get different voices here. A tidy slot. A tidy slot. Oh, man. i got to leave that one alone. Uh, and you can listen to the voices here. Health. Health. <laughs> okay. Um, different faces, so let's see if we can make her prettier. Uh, uh, whatever, different head. Okay, yeah, I'm going to leave that one alone too. And again, guys, different. These are basic standard stuff, but you can change hairstyle. Facial hair. She needs a beard. Yeah! I've been with worse. Uh, let's get some facial hair on this lady. Oh, yeah, this looks like the lady that used to serve me at Dairy Queen. Um, anyways, guys, uh, and you can select things like eye color, skin color, hair color and tattoos so i just want you guys to know that okay let's see well actually let's see what kind of tattoos oh yeah i like that uh <laughs> post malone type crap going on there but again lots of different customization you're gonna love it all right guys welcome back in terms of class there are six classes as you can see up at the top right here there's clerics fighters rangers wizards warlocks and rogues i'm going to play as a wizard so I'm going to be this type of player here, and I don't think I'm actually going to be a dwarf, but it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm just showing you this stuff. But there are six classes, and yeah, if you look at, like, let's take a look here at the different classes. The cleric class, and we're just going to quickly go over this because there's so much to it. Clerics, you know, is what they are, but here's the thing. Clerics have subclasses, and you're going to see here they've got life domain, they've got light domain, they've got trickery domain. So they've got three different subclasses, and then they can all, they can have, like, I think it's 20 different deities. So in, in just in just a cleric alone, this is bonkers. So you can, the deity is Selun, and Selun has these cantrips and these prepared spells. But if you click on it, you can go to Shar, you can go to Tempest, you can go to Tear, Bane. Like, it's it's literally, it's unbelievable the amount of, uh, you know, the number of options and customizations that you can play here. It's just, it's just crazy. Like, this is just cleric alone. If we go to fighter, fighters are a little bit more straightforward, so you can't really do too much with them because they're just, you know, meat shields. Rangers do have some options. You can do things like favored enemy. So right now you could be a mage breaker, so whatever the hell that is. You have a history of battling spellcasters, so I guess you can go ham on spellcasters. That's to be seen. And you can also do your ex natural explorer, so whether or not you're a beast tamer or an urban tracker or, you're, you know, you walk well over cold fire poison. Guys, the point is, is there's just tons of different options here for you to flip through. Uh, some of the different class features for Rogue. These are pretty standard, but you know what? They've got the sneak attack range and sneak attack melee. So for all you sneaky types, you got a character there. There's a class right there. And uh, Warlock has subclasses, kind of like the Cleric. They got the Great Old One, the Fiend. Well, they only got two, but hey, whatever. And you've got some customization options. Um, and the Wizard, which is, the, which is what I'm going to play as. You'll see here that they've got cantrips. Now, cantrips is a spell that can be cast at will without using a spell slot and without being prepared in advance. So these I can just pop off and I don't have to prepare them the night before. Um, spells, these are the six spells that they come with default. However, you'll see here that you can go ahead and select different spells as you see fit. So if I want false life, okay, I'll select that and done. And now it's added in. In terms of cantrips, you get three, but you have 13 to choose from. Shocking Grasp, True Strike, Acid Splash, Blade Ward. Like, there's so many choices. For those of you that love customization and you love just making a character exactly the way you want it, man, this game just looks like it has a crazy amount of potential. And uh, prepared spells, uh, you, you've got six different types, but you can only select three. So again, False Life, Fog Cloud, that sounds pretty badass. Uh, Thunder Wave, 
hey man, whatever. But anyways, guys, that's how. Those are just some of the bits and pieces about class. Let's get into the next stuff. The next part is skills. Now you get to select two skills, and you could select from this list. But here's the thing: you can only select skills with which you have proficiency. So. If you're a mage like I am, I'm probably not going to get stealth or sleight of hand because I have no thieving proficiencies. So you'll see your proficiencies over here on the left side: Arcana, History, Investigation, Insight. Makes sense if you're uh, if you're um, playing as a uh, as a wizard. You're not a mage; you're a wizard in this game. But just keep that in mind that you get to select two skills, and I've selected in this case Insight and Investigation, which are right here. The final piece here is abilities, and I'm used to seeing this first in a lot of games where you'll see your strength, dexterity, constitution, etc., etc. These are sort of pre-assigned, however, you can make limited adjustments to them. In my case, for example, I would, I don't know, I'd probably want to be a little smarter. For me, as a wizard, I want intelligence and constitution. Those are the two ones. I want some hit points because you're often getting your ass beaten as a mage or as a wizard. And uh, you want to be smart because you want to cast a lot of spells. So you'll see here I can decrease the wisdom, but it's not enough decrease to increase my intelligence. You can decrease charisma down, and I could maybe increase my constitution, decrease my dexterity, weigh the hell down, increase my strength. Doesn't matter. You can see that you can go ahead and make a limited amount of um, changes. I'm going to go ahead and use recommended. Uh, also, playing as a dwarf, my intelligence is like 15, but I think as when I was playing as an elf, it was 16 maximum. So keep that in mind. There are some racial differences as well. But guys, that is a very quick overview of just some of the customization, some of the replayability inside Baldur's Gate 3. I'm about to log into the game, and I'm about to get going, and I'm going to record it. I'm going to give you my thoughts as you go. Thank you for watching this video. I'll be back soon.